Hey guys, it's Tarek Maryface here. You're on uh, Maryface Aviation. And we're actually going to go through uh, the use of the CRP. Uh, it's the recommended flight computer for the EASA exams. Uh, if you go on the forums and you go online and talk to some pilots in real life, you'll find out that they don't really like the CRP-5. However, since it's, you know, a necessity for the exam, it's, uh, it's what we're going to use. Sorry for the really poor lighting and, just do this this way actually, there you go. Poor lighting and uh, the angle camera, the camera angle, but that's all we're going to have for now. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about calculating true airspeed or TAS. Uh, using the CRP is actually a lot easier than it looks. Um, I'm going to remove the ruler side because we don't need this for this video. We really don't. I don't know if you can see this. I'm just going to open up the angle a bit, a bit more. There you go. And then uh, calculating air speeds, you just need to understand some basic stuff. I'm not going to go through all of them, but here's the stuff. Uh, here's what you need to know. Sometimes in the questions, they'll give you a CAS or an EAS. There you go. Uh, calibrated and I am really embarrassed because I forgot what this means. I'll look it up and jot it down. Now, uh, what should I say? Basically there will be some questions where they'll give you a bunch of data and they'll ask you to find TAS or true airspeed. Okay. Now, these type of questions, they'll, use, they'll give you loads of information. Uh, they'll give you the flight level they'll give you the temperature they'll give you the the CAS or ES uh, they'll give you a, a load of stuff um, the pressure for example sometimes they'll give you that and, they'll, and the list will go on uh, the idea of these exams is not to use all of the information but actually to select the few uh, correct ones so we're going to do an example so you can see what I mean. Let's say the information given okay, is that CAS is equal to 240 knots. Okay, We have that the temperature outside equals minus... 21 degrees Celsius. We have that the flight level we are currently cruising at is flight level 320. And we have the QNH at the airfield nearby being 1029 hectopascals. Now, this is actually, you see the last bit of information don't actually need, and they'll do something on that just to confuse you. So let's go through the steps. Basically, there are a few things that affect uh, indicated airspeed. There will be the density of the air, uh, the speed of, of sound of the environment, which is dependent on the temperature, and the and and the altitude. Now, what we're actually going to do is use density altitude or pressure altitude. Sorry, pressure altitude. My bad. Uh, pressure altitude, which is the flight levels because this is actually what we need because this is what the airspeed indicate well this is what the well the airspeed indicator is actually calibrated to so what we're going to need is actually these three bits of information so let's let's go over let's do the first step the first step so I'm going to move this away the first step is to locate the macno or press out window which is this window right here okay now you see at the top you've got air temperature even at the bottom it's the same scale and inside you've got uh, numbers going from 0 to um, about 75 that's right and these are pressure altitudes times 1000 so if I go for example if I line 0 with 20 this means that flight level uh, choose 0 zero, sorry, two zero zero, 
so that's 20,000 feet pressure pressure altitude we are going to get a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. So if you look back at a question, it says that at minus 21 degrees Celsius, at flight level 320. So what we have to do is align minus 20 degrees Celsius with flight level 320. So we align that there, flight 1, 10 degrees, minus 20. Make sure it's on the right one. And you can see right here, flight level 320 with uh, my, sorry with minus 20 degrees you can actually move it a bit since it's minus 21 there you go now the trick is to convert CAS or ES uh, to TAS now this is actually really really easy you see the inside markings like they go all the way from from 10 to 99 or something like that or, yep there you go well what we're gonna do is we're gonna find 240 so we're gonna go here 24 right there bam we're gonna line this up with line 24 right here and we're gonna read the top part and it's going to be sorry there you go it's going to be 425 knots so the answer to this is 400 and 25 knots and that is your true airspeed it does sound excessive but that's actually correct so uh, that it's it's that simple uh, there's nothing uh, easier uh, now your question might be what if they give you TAS and they ask you to indicate what CAS is well it's re it's just working the other way around so let's say instead they give us four um, no, that's a bad example. Let's go for another example. Let's say they give us TAS. So true airspeed is um, 500 knots. You've got the temperature being minus 30 degrees Celsius. You've got flight level being flight level... Uh, 370 and they ask you to find CAS EFs because in well you'll find that in jet uh, aircraft these two values are actually really really similar so like we did before we are going to align in the window we're going to align minus 30 degrees with flight level 370 so well, one good trick not to get confused is use a zero uh, degrees as a datum, then move three six, three seven, and then move the temperatures minus ten, minus twenty, minus thirty. Perfect. There you go. Now we've got minus thirty. And now what we're going to do is instead of starting at the inside scale, we're just going to start on the outside scale. There you go. Three seven zero. Bam. Right on it. Yeah. There you go. And what you're going to get is you're going to have an airspeed of 190. This is equals to 190 knots. And it's that simple. There is nothing else to it. Uh, they obviously, like, there's some questions where they're not going to ask you just that. They might ask you, they'll do really long winded questions, like if you're doing PSR and PET, which is something we'll look at it later. But they'll, they'll ask you basically to find the ground speed indirectly, maybe. It, <laughs> it's really that simple. They'll usually give you uh, wind vectors, uh, uh, wind components. Uh, component. You might have to calculate it yourself using the wind side of the CRP. But let's say they ask you for the wind component. Uh, they give you the wind component being a tailwind of plus 40 knots. And you've got a task that we calculated earlier, 425 knots, for example. It's it it, it can't get really sim simpler. I can't. I, I I honestly shouldn't be able to. I don't know how I can make it simpler. It's just adding them up. This is the component. Remember, component, which is an important factor. Which means it might not necessarily be the total velocity of the wind, just the velocity, the the relevant wind relative to the. Uh, direction of travel of the aircraft. 
Well, that was it. Um, if you need any, if you need me to answer any questions, just leave a post in the comment section below. This is really, this is a really long-winded explanation, but it makes it actually. It, it's just seeing someone do it is actually so much easier than than having to uh, to read the books or doing through Bristol Ground School apps or whatnot. Uh, it's just it, it saves you a whole lot of time. So I hope this was useful for you. I'm Tarek Meriface. You've been watching a tutorial on the Meriface Aviation Channel. If you like this, subscribe uh, for more videos. Don't forget to watch out my, much for my other videos. And I've got a main channel. Also, I have a blog as a student pilot and a website, www.maryfaceaviation.com. All of these have links in the description box. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.